Okay, we're recording. Hey everyone, welcome to Studio Hero. My name's Dan. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. We'd love to have you on board. So we're taking a look at complex roofs in Revit. So right now we're taking a look at a model, kind of an example of where we're heading. And so we have just some dormers. That's what we're going to talk about first. And then we just have some other roof lines tying in. I'm just going to show you my settings on those. We don't really need this uh, this wall in here. I was just playing around with some uh, curtain wall families by Nana Wall. So shout out to Nana Wall for having some awesome Revit families on their website. Check them out if you haven't. NanaWall.com, I believe. I don't get any kind of kickback for that. I just really appreciated their Revit models. They did a nice job. All right, so we're taking a look over here at these dormers just as an example of where we're heading. And if I zoom out a little bit, you're going to see that I have a level three that I made. That out of the box, if you're new to Revit, is not in existence. So what you would do is just go over to an elevation view and real quick, click on level two, make a copy and jog that up to where you want your primary roof line to be. Speaking of the primary roof line, we take a look right here. That was made in level three as a roof by footprint. And if you want to see my sketch on that, let me click on it and say edit footprint. That is a sketch that I made with the pick walls command. And when I did that, I defined my overhang. I picked on the side of the wall, the exterior side where I want that overhang to, to go. And then I had for these lines defined slope checked for all of them, except for this front and this front line you'll see is the gable side. So define slope will send things back, rise and run like a hipped roof, everything would be checked. Okay, let's go and take a look at dormers. So I have an east elevation that would show my building like this. So I need to look at a west elevation if I'm going to add dormers to this side. And that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to go over to my west elevation and I'm going to close out of all my inactive views. And over on this west elevation, let me show you a couple of little tricks to plan out the spacing of your dormers. So roof by extrusion is what we're going to do. Pick a plane and say, OK, and we're going to click on this sub fascia right here. And then let's associate what we're doing to the level that our roof is that we're tying into. So that would start at level three. So we'll do the same for our roof right here. Now, let's say I want this to be also like three dormers popping out and I want them to be like equal thirds across this length. So I'm going to draw this length as a sketch that's going to work as kind of a construction line for me right now. I'm going to end up deleting it at the end. And then what I want to do is break this line up into thirds. So there's a split tool and we can just split this thing up into two uh, two spots. That way there's three segments and then let's go in dimension across uh, that line to then make equal parts. So if I go and click on that line, I can use this little measure align dimension tool, click on these endpoints, just like that, click and hit the little equal sign. And then now I can drop down a little uh, midpoint line or I can bring it up even. I'm just gonna use that as a mirror line. And then let's do one more over here just to give ourselves a sense of the distance from the peak of one dormer to where the peak of another copy is going to need to go. So if I go and measure that up from peak to peak, it's going to be 14 foot 7 inches. And looks like, hmm, looks like all of these are just like a little bit off from my total length. So what I might want to think about doing is redrawing that line and sketching it out or just highlighting everything and using the arrow keys to just nudge it over slightly to wherever I feel comfortable. It didn't change my spacing here. Once again, this is going to be 14, seven, let's just call it. And so to the next one to its midpoint, just to clarify, is also going to be 14 foot, seven inches away. OK, we're doing well. So now let's go and let's say stylistically or aesthetically, I wanted to steal this line. That's slope, right? That's a 912 slope. I can go and do some calculations or I can just do a sketch on rise and run, run 12 inches, rise nine, connect the dots, make this slope. Or I can do the pick lines command and grab that edge. Now, since that's the edge of a corner of a gable that I just picked, Right, that actually might be uh, not so telling as to 
no, it, it is telling us to the slope. So never mind. We're all good. Um, and then I'm going to go and grab that line. Whoops. Just made two of them. Let me hit escape. Click on one and delete it. Nope, that was the good one. Control Z, undo. Okay, I'm gonna click on that line that I use pick lines to steal from. I'm gonna go over here and then use the move command and grab that line and snap it right here. The next thing I wanna do is mirror that line over. And this is going to look less messy in just a second. So I'm gonna pick that line, mirror it across here. Now let's chop it up. So trim tool, which is also TR on the keyboard, we can trim that up. We're gonna end up not using any of these pink lines up top pretty soon, so those are all just to plan out our thinking. And then down here, we wanna clip this gable roof wherever we want that to end. So we're just gonna say right about here, TR to trim and trim that up like so, and then delete that bottom line. We don't need it anymore. Now that we have this, we're gonna be making a generic nine inch roof as soon as we hit the check mark. But to just double check our measurement from peak to peak, 14 foot, seven inches. Cool. Highlight everything, hit shift and unselect the two lines that we actually needed and then press delete on everything else. 14 foot, seven inches was our magic number in this demo. If we look in 3D, here's what we've started to make. Let's go back to our elevation. Now, maybe I don't want it to peek out at the ridge, so I'm just gonna hit the up arrow or up and down arrows a little bit to nudge this thing down. I could also do the move command and move it more accurately, but I'm just gonna let it land just below that ridge. I'm gonna check it off. In 3D, we can see what we've done. Since we made it, uh, when we clicked on that subfascia, if you remember when we were making this roof by extrusion that defined the front, we're gonna take the back and bring that way over. You just need to bring it enough over where it's not touching the roof we want it to die into. That's counterintuitive. We want to actually bring that so it's not touching it for right now. Then let's go and let this thing slide all the way into the roof. So by clicking on this roof that we just made, click the join unjoin roof command, click the leading edge, the edge that you want to be moving, and click then the face you want that to move into. Now we have our dormered roof, but we still need to make the walls and then we need to make the cutout. So in my West Elevation view, 14 foot 7 inches was going to be where we we're going to copy this over. So 14 foot 7 inches, enter. So there's one. And we can go another 14 foot 7 inches. Here I'm going to go, whoops, I made two of them right on top of each other. Control Z. Let's go and take this one and copy that over. 14 foot, seven inches. It's not work. I think maybe I have to hit space. Did I make two? Bear with me for just a moment. Got the one. In 3D, we have one selected. Copy, base point, this way. 14 foot, seven inches. Yeah, it's not wanting to go. This happened to me before, too. Okay, there's some weird snap thing going on right now. So what I'm going to need to do is try to maybe do it off this main one right here. And that would be 28 foot, 29 feet, 2 inches. Okay, and let's go back to 3D. So now we have, ignore these dormers. Let's just look at these three. That's what we've been working on. I don't think it looks as nice when you look at both because they're at different heights. It's all weird. So now that we have these, we need to throw some walls underneath them. So let's go back to our, uh, actually, let's go to our level three elevation. And in our level three, you don't see the walls that we need to see. Uh, we actually, we don't see the roof that we need to see. We don't see that dormered roof. So there's a setting for level three that we can do. We want to do a look up from level three to an unbounded height and say apply. And there's our roof line. From here, architecture, we're going to do wall. I have a little trick for you. So we're going to go do just a generic eight, something you plan to use for an exterior wall. This would be good. Eight inches thick is good for like a a wood uh, sided wall or like a clapboard sided wall. And 
From here, let's do finish face exterior and do join status disallow for right now. That allows us to control later exactly what this wall is going to join to. Uh, sometimes if you allow the join on these kinds of walls, they act a little strange when you want to align maybe it with an overhang uh, for the roof or into the wall that's dying into. So there's a little more control here with disallow. However, just a tiny bit more manual labor. All right. Now I'm just going to go and make this thing right on top of one of these. We only need to do one. I'm going to then move it to define that overhang. So I'm just going to move that straight down and do, let's just do like an eight inch overhang, something kind of subtle. And we're going to go bring this in eight inches and this guy over eight inches. And we could have done maybe like an offset click, but this is easy enough. TR to trim. Let's grab these ends and then let's just go and drag this dot to snap to the ends of these walls. Control and click them all. 3D. How are we looking? We're looking okay. On the sides, we're all good. All right, before I do attach top base, I'm going to go to my west elevation with them all still selected. And we are going to do a copy from peak to peak to peak. Escape a couple times, 3D, here's what we have. All right, now no worries about these seams right now. We'll fix that in a second. Control, pick the three pack and do attach top base and click on that roof. Same thing, control, pick the three pack, attach top base, click on that roof. Control, three pack, attach top base, click the roof. All right, cool. Now we need to do the join command. We're going to manually join these up. So let's pick on this little guy, join, and then pick on the other uh, wall. And then we have to do the same thing again. It's two at a time. And let's hover and get this other wall. Did we get it? Did we join it already? What happened, Revit? Looks like we didn't, so let's do it. Join. And there it is. Okay, so now that's all good. Now, I didn't join them before I copied them. Maybe I could have. I think I've tried that before and it didn't work so well. Um, but that could be something that you do as well if it saves you time. You can try that out. Okay, we're all good now. So I have those, now let's do the cut. So this one's not so bad. Architecture tab, dormer opening. Click on the wall or the roof you want to cut. That's the big one. Pick the sketch that you need to make. So that's the roof and the three walls. The three pack of walls. Sometimes if your roof line is big enough, you don't even have the side walls. And it's even easier. Okay. Now that I have those, now that I have those, let's do the trim tool and trim it all up and finish it. And if I go and click on this roof and look at it in ISO, you can see the hole that I made. And we're just going to repeat that for the other ones. And I don't need to show it in the video because we just save some time that way. But you just repeat that process. If you want to see it again, you can rewind. All right, so now over here, here's what I did with this roof. This is a roof by extrusion. And I just did the join command. And I joined it just straight up over in here. These walls here, I made them at level three base constraint, unconnected. I disallowed the automatic join. And then I joined them to the walls that I have right next to them that I have um, set at level one going up to level three. Both of these walls have attached top base on them. So if I click on this and detach to see what that looks like, right? Now with this roof, I had done this join. So I'll just show you that. And then with this wall, which is just like these other walls up here, I did attach top base. And then I joined it with the join tool to this wall right next to it. And that 
hid the seam between those two geometries. Same thing happened on the other side. So if I hover and click on that wall, I had it going all the way up. I attached it right here and in the level three plan, this is what it looks like. Going to exactly where I want it to be as far as overhang. All right, now that we have those, uh, this one here, you see how it kind of jogs around here? If I detach it, I just did a roof by extrusion. You could also do a roof by footprint. And I just drew it going right up to this exterior wall here. And then I just drew some more walls that came out from level one. And I attached those to top base on this roof. And then this roof, I clicked on it, it did the uh, roof join tool, leading edge to the one you want to flow into. And that copes it around that roof real nice, just like that. And that's it. Roofs aren't too complicated in Revit. Uh, this one right here, also a roof by extrusion. However, this one's a good one to point out. Roof by extrusion doesn't work very well with that join tool if it were to intersect already into the roof. So I had to have it come out in front of it a little bit for this to work correctly. However, I probably could have achieved this result by just incorporating this into the sketch of the main roof, right? Did that all just roof by footprint. But that's, uh, that's how that one all kind of worked out. So there you have it. Roofs are not so scary anymore in Revit, hopefully for you. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one, as well as future videos that are going to also focus on the architectural design process, all the way from pre-design, concept design, schematic design development, some construction documentation. I think uh, some holistic projects are uh, right around the corner. I have one on a tiny house design that I plan on releasing and it focuses on the architectural design process. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.